kirit bardhari Gopi Jana Bala Bhakirid Bharatari Yashoda Nandhana Prachachana Ranchanha Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Ranchana Yamunathira Vanachari Yamunathira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Gaur Premanande Haribo Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namne Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nasta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu 
Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, chapter number 13. Beginning chapter 13 entitled, The Stealing of the Boys and Calves by Brahma. Text number one. Shri Shuka Ovacha. Sadhu Prishtam Mahabhaga Tvaya Bhagavat Otama Yannutana Yasishyasya Yannutana Yashishashya Shravan Api Katam Mohu Shravan Api Katam Mohu Shri Shuka Ovacha Sadhu Prishtam Mahabhagha Tvaya Bhagavatotama Yannutanaya Shishyasya Srinvan Apikatam Moho Shri Shuka Ovacha Sadhu Prishtam Mahabhaka Tvaya Bhagavatotama Yannutaya Yashishyasya Srinvan api katam moho. Shri Shuka Uvacha. Sukadeva Goswami said, Sadhu Prishtam 
I have been very much honored by your inquiry. Mahabhaga, you are a greatly fortunate personality. Twaya, by you, Bhagavata Uttama, O best of devotees, yet because Nutanayasi, you are making newer and newer. Isashya of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Srinvan Api, although you are continuously hearing Katam, the pastimes, Moho, again and again. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. I think this was the last chapter, Srila Prabhupada. He got into 14, did he? He began it. Yeah. Translation, Srila Sukadeva Goswami said, O best of devotees, most fortunate Parikshit, you have inquired very nicely, for although constantly hearing the pastimes of the Lord, you are perceiving his activities to be newer and newer. Please repeat. Sukadev Goswami said, O best of devotees, most fortunate Parikshit, you have inquired very nicely. For although constantly hearing the pastimes of the Lord, you are perceiving his activities to be newer and newer. Purport. Unless one is very advanced in Krishna consciousness, one cannot stick to hearing the pastimes of the Lord constantly. Nityam naiva nava manam. Even though advanced devotees hear continually about the Lord for years, they still feel that these topics are coming to them as newer and fresher. Therefore, such devotees cannot give up hearing of the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Premanjana charita bhakti vilo Janina Santa Sadaiva Rideshu Vilo Kayanti. The word Santa is used to refer to persons who have developed love for Krishna. Yamsham Masundaram Majinjagunam Swarupam Govinda Madipursham Tamaham Bajamin. Parikshit Maharaj, therefore, is addressed as Bhagavat Uttama, the best of devotees. Because unless one is very much elevated in devotional service, one, not, one cannot feel ecstasy from hearing more and more and appreciate the topics as ever fresher and newer. Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Kurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadante Kam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajevam 
Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Stya He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadegor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so Sukadeva Goswami is appreciating Maharaj Pariksit's inquiry and he, he praises him because he, he knows that Maharaj Pariksit has been hearing him for some time now, right? From the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam to go up to the 10th canto must have taken some time for Sukadeva Goswami. So Maharaj Parikshit had been sitting there, hearing and inquiring. And of course, just at the end of the last chapter, Maharaj Parikshit put his inquiry, showing how attentively he was hearing, that he wanted to know why it took so long for the people of, for the coward boys of Vrindavan to tell about the killing of the Agasura demon that it happened when they were five, but they did not tell people about it until they were six. A period of one year had passed, so Maharaj Parikshit wanted to understand what was the mystery, what was the maya that had taken place, what had Krishna done. So Sukadeva Goswami is appreciating that uh, Maharaj Parikshit is able to give so much attention to hearing this message of Srimad Bhagavatam. Of, this is uh, recommended, of course, in the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the second chapter, Sutta Goswami is describing how we have to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Srimadam Srinvatam Svakita Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ridi Antas Tohiya Badrani Vidunoti Suratatam That Lord Krishna, super soul within the hearts of all living entities, takes away the desire for material enjoyment from those who relish his message, which in it is in itself virtuous when properly heard and chanted. So, very nice. Relishing the message. Maharaj Parikshit had been relishing the message of Sukadeva Goswami, drinking the nectar. That was also mentioned in the last chapter, that Parikshit Maharaj was relishing the nectar. And similarly, in the very first chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, when Sutta, Sutta Goswami is addressing the sages at Naimasharanya, Oh, no, it's, it's Sonaka. Sonaka is addressing Sutta Goswami because Sonaka had been inquiring. And so he said, we never tire of hearing the topics of the personality of Godhead. Right? So this is the nature of transcendental knowledge. That, you know, we read these pastimes again and again. We never tire of hearing them. Rather, it, because 
Prabhupada compares, he says there's mundane literature and transcendental literature. The mundane literature is a very static experience. Static means that you can read it one time, after one time, there's no more pleasure in it. You, the pleasure is reducing. But the transcendental nectar, the, the scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita and Ramayana and Mahabharata, we hear them, Chaitanya Charitamrita, we hear them, and the more we hear them, the more we want to hear them, the more we want to relish them and develop the taste for them. So we want to experience that taste for hearing the scriptures. And Prabhupada writes in the purport that this requires a little advancement in devotional service. We have to develop the taste for hearing. And that means we have to get rid of the anartas, the dirty things in the heart, the contamination. We have to remove it through our own devotional service. The process of making progress in Krishna consciousness is working in the service of Krishna, utilizing our senses in the service of Krishna. Rishi Kesha Rishi Kena Sevanam Bhaktir Uchate. Krishna is the proprietor of our senses and we're meant to use our senses in his service. And when we use our senses properly in his service, the result is that we become freed from all material designations, right? Sarvopadi vinir muktam tadvarat vena nirmalam rishi kesha rishi kena sevanam bhaktir uchate. This, uh, this is one of the well-known verses describing devotional service. Sarva upadi, upadi, designations, right? We like to designate ourselves. Carry a danda. I am sannyasi, right? <laughs> we, uh, we, we, we have our designations, our neck beads. I am Vaishnava. We put our tilak, I am Vaishnava, I am devotee, designations. But ultimately, we have to give up these designations, at least give up the bodily designations. Transcendental designations are okay. To designate ourselves as a servant of Krishna is very nice. But uh, material designations, you know, I am manager, I am controller, I am the Lord, like this. This is a bodily conception of life. And devotional service means to get rid of the bodily conception of life. To come to the transcendental platform. The Brahma Buddha platform. On the bodily platform, we can never be happy. And so we want to taste the nectar of the scriptures. Is the nectar there? There's a lot of nectar there. But because of our disease condition, we cannot taste it. Rupa Goswami gives the example in the nectar of instruction. Just like the person with jaundice, right? Did you have jaundice before? Yeah, I also had it too, yeah. Uh, very, uh, 1975, I first, I'd been in India two months and I got jaundice. <laughs> that was when they sent me to Calcutta. <laughs> so, when we get jaundice, you know, I when I had it, I... I thought go to the doctor and find out what you're supposed to do. Doctor said, I don't have any medicine for you. No, you just have to rest, right? But some wise people know about the glory of sugar cane juice. And you're supposed to get a big glass of sugar cane juice and you drink that sugar cane juice. But that's torture. In the beginning it's so bitter. It's so unpleasant. Why? Because of our jaundice. 
So the same way, people in the jaundice condition of life cannot relish hearing the topics of Krishna, the pastimes of the Lord. There's a lot of nectar there, but somehow we're not tasting the nectar because of our jaundice, our diseased condition. We have to remove that. You have to go on drinking the sugar cane, right? And then slowly, gradually, you get some taste. And then the same with our hearing and chanting. It takes some time. And Prabhupada also said, when he first heard his spiritual master, he could not understand what he was talking about. But he said, I never went away. That was Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, I never went away. So that's important. And when Prabhupada, said, and, and later on when he took initiation from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, at that time Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada remarked, Oh yes, I have noted him. He likes to hear. So that, that was very important. It's a very important qualification to take some pleasure in hearing. Just as the speaker has to be qualified, the audience also have to be qualified. Described in the first chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, preparing all of us for studying Srimad Bhagavatam. Shonaka is describing Sutta Goswami's qualification. That Sutta Goswami had studied everything. He was a qualified teacher. He had properly studied and he was well versed in all the scriptures. Not only had he studied, but he was proper in proper behavior. He was not a debauchee. He was not fallen. He was very much in control of his mind and senses. So he, he behaved uh, in a manner very suitable for someone speaking on Srimad Bhagavatam. And of course, in the Naimasharanya forest, he's addressing so many thousands of great sages. So you have to be very qualified to speak to such people. But the sages, they were also qualified. And the audience's qualification was, they were eager to hear. And Sukadeva Goswami is appreciating like that about Maharaj Parikshit, that he's eager to hear. He's been hearing constantly, but he's not tired. You know, Prabhu, <laughs> we, Prabhu, we would give a class after half an hour, oh, I'm glad the class is over. <laughs> right? You know, a half an hour, you know. Prabhupada saw the, the audience's attention, their hearing capacity is very limited. Therefore, Prabhupada reduced the duration of his classes. In the beginning, he was speaking for an hour or more. But after some time, then it would become usually a standard class, half an hour, 20 minutes. And we're even told today that the, the hearing capacity of people is very less. How much can they sit and hear? Not very long. Therefore, you see a lot of things on the internet. Most They will put three-minute video, five-minute video is a long time, you know. Three minutes, okay, they can tolerate. But half an hour, wow! <laughs> I remember when I was, uh, I was doing some work one time in China trying to, you know, introduce Krishna consciousness many years ago in China. And at one point I was uh, giving a presentation to some university students. So there was one American man there. He was uh, actually from the Mormon. And, you know, I was doing quizzes and I was giving away books as a prize. So I had a Bhagavad Gita for someone. So I gave a Bhagavad Gita for someone. And the American man from this Mormon, he said, What? You read such a big book? <laughs> 
I didn't tell him, well, that's only the beginning. We have so many more. <laughs> but he was like, really, you read such a big book. <laughs> People today, you know, they don't have a lot of capacity to study and to absorb things. And difficult. Why? Because so many material desires in the mind. They're struggling with their mind and senses. Huh? So this is an unfortunate position of the conditioned souls. They're, they have that jaundice of material life. And they cannot taste the real nectar of Krishna consciousness. But to a devotee, we have very different experience. We hear and we want to hear more and more. Just like when we have Kirtan Mela, so many devotees, they go in there and they would sit there the whole day, day after day, to hear. And similarly, when we have Shravana Utsav, people will go there and hear. And they'll be happy to be there the whole day and hear and hear. It's pleasurable for people. For those who have a pure heart. So we have to purify the heart. There's a nice pastime I was remembering uh, because in the purport Prabhupada talks about how you have to feel this nectar that it's ever fresh. It's very relishable. So in the Chaitanya Charitamrita one of the interesting pastimes is Lord Chaitanya at Rathiatra. And Lord Chaitanya is dancing at Rathiatra. And then at a certain point, the, there's a break. And Lord Chaitanya goes into the garden there. And he lays down. He wants to take some rest because they've been doing a lot of energetic kirtan and dancing. So Lord Chaitanya go, lays down to take some rest. And at that time, it was arranged that Maharaj Prataparudra would come. And Maharaj Prataparudra had been told by Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya to disguise himself, to put on the dress of an ordinary Vaishnava devotee. In other words, dhoti, and maybe wrap a cloth around himself, like that. I don't think people wore kurtas in the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Did they? Probably not. So anyway, uh, Maharaj Prataparudra comes in and he bows down and he touches the feet of Lord Chaitanya and then he begins to massage his legs very expertly. And while he's massaging the legs of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he begins to recite the Gopi Gita from the 10th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. When the gopis are looking for Krishna, Krishna had gone away from the gopis. It's very impressive to read this. But you can understand Maharaj Prata Parudra, he was really a good devotee because he could, he could begin to recite the Gopi Gita. Hmm? Jayati te dikam dikshuta dikshubrajat Jayate te, jayati te dikam, janmanabraja, shayata indiras, jasvadatrahi, daita drishyatam dikshutavakas, twaya dritasavas, twamba chinvate. The gopis are singing to Krishna that, O oh Lord Krishna, that because of your birth here in Braja, the land of Vrindavan has become glorious. And Indira, the goddess of fortune, resides here always. We are maintaining our lives only for your pleasure. So, dear Lord, kindly we are searching for you. Kindly show yourself to us. 
So like this, uh, the gopis were singing in separation of Krishna. And Maharaj Prataparudra is reciting Gopi Gita. And then he comes to that wonderful verse. Tavakatamritam tapta jivanam kaviviriditam kaumasapaham shravana mangalam shrimad atatam buvigrinantiye buridajana. And when Lord Chaitanya hears that verse, then he you know, he was laying down with his eyes closed while Maharaj Prataparudra was massaging him. But when he hears that verse, then he, he becomes enlivened, so enlivened. And he, he stands up and he embraces Maharaj Prataparudra. Now, previously, Lord Chaitanya didn't even want to meet Maharaj Prataparudra because he was a king. And Lord Chaitanya said, I'm a sannyasi. I cannot associate with a materialistic person like a king. It will be a stain on my character. One stain on the cloth, and the cloth is ruined. If I associate with him, it will be very, very... But here, Lord Chaitanya is embracing him. And he's saying, go on, go on reciting. Oh, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? You have done so much for me. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is telling Maharaj Prataparudra, and you are Burida, Burida, right? But it, the, the last word in the verse Tavakatamritam tapta jivanam kavibiritam kaumasapaham. Shravana Mangalam Srimad Atatam Buridhajana. Buridhajana. You are Buridha, very magnanimous, right? Very magnanimous person. You are Buridha. And you have done so much for me. You know, this was Lord Chaitanya hearing the Gopi Git. So. He was taking so much pleasure to hear these things. And similarly, of course, Lord Chaitanya would go almost regularly to see Gadarhar Pandit and to hear Srimad Bhagavatam from him, to hear about Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj, because he got so much pleasure in hearing these pastimes again and again. It was never anything stagnant or dry, but it was a dynamic affair, always increasing, feeling more and more ecstasy in hearing these wonderful pastimes. And we saw similarly Srila Prabhupada, how Srila Prabhupada liked to hear Krishna book. And he would have some devotees sit there and read Krishna book to him. And Prabhupada would say, I never wrote these books. Krishna must have written them through me. So he was relishing hearing the topics of Krishna. So, so likely we also have to develop our taste and appreciation for hearing about Krishna, for hearing these topics again and again. Just like hearing Bhagavad Gita, we may say, oh, Bhagavad Gita, I know Bhagavad Gita, I've studied Bhagavad Gita. But there's still so much. We can go through it. His Holiness uh, Hanumat Prasak Swami, he said, you can study at the level of Bhakti Shastri, and you can study Bhagavad Gita again at the level of Bhakti Vaibhav. And you can, you can go on studying, uh, you know, at higher and higher levels. There's no limit to how, to what depth or what height we can study these scriptures at. The message is so rich, but we're just like little fish on the surface. We're only tasting, the, we're only beginning to enter in. We don't know everything. We're just like 
somebody paddling in the shore of the sea. We don't know everything about the ocean. We're only there at the shore. What do we know about the sea? But they say, there's a whole ocean of nectar of devotion. We want to go into these things and to dive deep into them and become more and more absorbed in appreciating and relishing the nectar of these different topics. So like this, Sukadeva Goswami is encouraging Maharaj Parikshit that he's very pleased with him, he's very satisfied that he's hearing. And now Sukadeva Goswami has come to the tenth canto. He's describing the smiling face of the Lord, the the height of the, the the most maybe the probably most important of all the cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam because it's describing all the topics of Lord Krishna. So certainly Maharaj Parikshit wants to hear very carefully everything in detail and he is very absorbed. Now you could we would think you could understand in that situation your life is threatened, you don't have long to live, you know, you'd be so worried, it would be difficult to concentrate, difficult to focus the mind, because I'll be thinking, when is that snake bird going to come? When am I going to get the, when is he going to kill me? You'd be a little worried more thinking like that. But Maharaj Pariksha's mind is very controlled, he's very focused on just hearing this subject matter, of Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, sometimes we get managers in ISKCON, they come to a Srimad Bhagavatam class, but their mind is always on all the activities they've got to do, and they've got their handphone, and they're looking at their handphone and checking the mail, and they're thinking about the appointments they have all day. You know, because they have a lot, they think, oh, I'm so busy, I, don't, I can't really concentrate on Srimad Bhagavatam. But here's Maharaj Parikshit. He's going to die. His life's coming to an end. It's the final days of his life. But he's so focused. He wants to hear very carefully. And of course, Maharaj Parikshit had asked, what is the duty of one who is about to die? And what is the duty of all people at all time? And the answer was the same for both of them, that they both have to hear, chant, glorify, and remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is our real business as devotees, right? We have our, this is our morning program. This is where we get our juice, our strength to go through a day, another day in the service of Lord Krishna. We want to have something to absorb our mind in. And we want to absorb our mind in this, these topics of Srimad Bhagavatam. So I was noticing here that Maharaj Parikshit had been addressed as Bhagavat Uttama. But remember, yesterday when we were in the previous chapter, it was uh, Sutta Goswami described Shonaka as Bhagavat Uttama Uttama. <laughs> the, the great saintly person, greatest of all. So Maharaj Parikshit, he's Bhagavat Uttama, but he's not Bhagavat Uttama Uttama. That was Shona Karishi. But Maharaj Parikshit, still he's a great devotee. And he's Mahabhaga, he's very fortunate. He's very fortunate because he was a Kshatriya and he was engaged in so many... Uh, duties and responsibilities, ruling his kingdom and keeping track of Kali and trying to keep Kali out of the kingdom. So he was engaged in many different responsibilities. He didn't get so much time to absorb his mind and to associate and hear from saintly persons. He had never met Sukadeva Goswami before. It was only with his curse and with him renouncing the kingdom and taking off his royal clothes and everything, that it was at that time Sukadev Goswami came. Because Sukadev Goswami, now he's ready to hear. 
before he was still, you know, he's a king and his duties and so on, so many responsibilities, not able to focus so much. So Sukadeva Goswami didn't even bother to come. But now he's ready, he's preparing for that for this big moment to leave the body, right? The final exam which we all have coming to us one day, sooner or later. The one exam we don't want to fail, right? We have many other exams in our life, so many exams and tests we have, but the ultimate test is coming at the end of life. And Maharaj Pariksit, is really intensely preparing himself. Prabhupada wrote to the temple president of New York, at that time it was a devotee called Gopi Paranadana. So uh, Prabhupada wrote to him, he, Prabhupada was giving initiation, and he, Prabhupada said, Get, make sure all of these devotees learn to cram my purports. He wants, Cram, you know, did you cram for an exam? Before an exam you have to cram, you, you study, you know, you stay up all night before the exam because you haven't done much work all year. So you have to put a lot of work in the final days before the exam. You really have to cram. You have to do a lot of prep in the final days just to get yourself really ready. So Prabhupada used that expression, he said, cram my purports. Right? We study really intensely, carefully, so that we can really get the message and understand what Prabhupada is telling us. And we have to do like that if we want to pass that test which is coming with the end of life when we have to give up this body. Antakale smaran mukvat. Antakale Smaranmukvakalevaram, right? One who can remember me at the time of death, then he will come to me without fail. Eighth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Ante Narayana Smriti, right? We should remember the, the Lord at the end of life. So we have to practice. If we have not practiced remembering the Lord, that's very difficult at the time of death. Therefore, Maharaj Parikshit, he has to really, he wants to really prepare himself. Of course, he had practiced from even before his birth, he had some experience. But still, with the final days coming, he wants to really intensify him, his meditation and his absorption in the Lord. And he does it through hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the ultimate process in this Kali Yuga that we hear the Srimad Bhagavatam and we discuss it together and in this way we can make our lives perfect. We can be ready for that final test. Hare Krishna. Some questions, comments? Yes, Janani Vas Prabhu. He gave them a blessing. He said, of course, you're beyond blessing, but it's my duty to give you blessing. That whatever you speak will always stay fresh and ever. Therefore, Prabhupada says, when we read the Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavad Gita, it's always ever fresh because it's the boon of benediction at Sandra Panimuni. Blessed. Whatever you speak will be just like Veda, it will be eternal. It's Thank you very much. Fresh. That's a very, very, very wonderful quote. Thank you. Krishna and Balaram. Because Krishna and Balaram had uh, brought back Sandipani's Muni, Sandipani Muni's son from death. So Sandipani Muni was very pleased with them. Was it then that he blessed them? Or was it after he'd been staying in the forest with, with the... It's my duty to give you blessings as my disciples. But did he bless them 
did he bless Krishna and Balaram? Was it after he brought their son back from death that he blessed them? Also, also he wanted his son. Or was it when the that time when he was in Krishna was in the forest with Sudama, and they spent the whole night in the forest. They'd gone collecting wood for Sandipa. No, it's like Guru Dakshini. He asked, Krishna Balaram asked, what action we can give? And he said, I bet these wonderful persons, I better ask for something very wonderful. So, yeah, please bring my dead son back again to life. But the, uh, the, the, the blessing was one as a teacher. Okay, so Sandipani Muni gave a blessing to Krishna and Balaram that whatever they speak will remain forever fresh. After they studied in Sandipani Muni's ashram for two months. Sandipani Muni's ashram, originally that place was called Avantipur. Today it's known as Ujjain. And we have our ISKCON center there also in Ujjain. So the, they had a, a bless, that blessing was ever fresh that I thought I understood that to be that they would be able to remember everything he taught them. Whatever you speak will remain fresh. But mm -hmm. okay, thank you very much. You made a point about uh, comparing Shonaka Rishi with uh, Maharaj Parikshit, saying one was Bhagama Uta Uttama and the other one is Bhagama Uttama, Bhagama, however you pronounce it. But the statement was being made by two different people. If you look, uh, Shukadeva Goswami is glorifying Parikshit and Sutta Goswami is glorifying Shanaka. So to make it as a uh, hierarchical, you know, one is more... Higher than the other? Yeah, you, you might... Uh, I think it's two people speaking their appreciation about, uh, you know, two different people, so... Uh, Okay, yeah, good point. Yeah, they just the different speakers, so they appreciate their audience in different ways. Nice questions from Jamuna Priya Devidasi. Thank you for Guru Dev's excellent class. Those great souls, after listening to the instructions of Krishna, they can immediately practice it. And they can also concentrate on hearing tirelessly. So I want to ask, when can I make such an advancement and reach this level? When can you make advancement and reach the level of someone like Maharaj Parikshit? Well, <laughs> by pious activities over many lifetimes by doing devotional service, simply by doing more intense devotional service. Continue with your service and don't stop. Just like we said about Srila Prabhupada, he didn't go away, he liked to hear. So you continue to hear and you continue to chant and you do keep yourself always busy in the service of Krishna. And gradually, you will also become like that. By sp our spiritual identity is to be an, an associate of Krishna. We all belong with Krishna in the spiritual world. We have love of Krishna in our hearts. We just have to purify our heart. And the process to purify our heart is sadhana bhakti. All the things which we are doing. All the work, all the chanting, and the hearing, and the questioning, and the studying, and memorizing slokas, and the worshipping of the deities, and offering the artis, and the cooking for the deities, all of these different activities, the preaching, and book distribution, everything 
we do it when we do it in Krishna consciousness, then we will make more and more advancement. Example was given just like the mango. Nowadays mangoes are coming into season and we get the green mango, but the green, you keep the green mango for a, a little while and it becomes ripe, riper and riper, right? So the same way our devotion for Lord Krishna is like that mango. Our mango is green, but if we continue in the service of Krishna, it will become riper and ripen. My most respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of Maharaj. I really want to listen about how Srila Prabhupada is translating Srimad Bhagavatam and the other books. Because when we heard about the background, and this would inspire us to read and value these priceless gifts even more. So I'm begging you, please share some nectars from Sitala Devi Dasi. Nectar about Srila Prabhupada translating. Well, Srila Prabhupada's translation was his uh, most important activity. Prabhupada dedicated his personal time to translation. He would wake up very, he would sleep for a few hours in the night and then wake up about midnight and begin his translation work. He liked to do his translation in the middle of the night because people would not disturb him. There was no disturbances and he could sit peacefully and he would translate. And he had one big book which he carried with him with the commentaries of the Acharyas and he would refer to that when he was doing his translation and he would read what the Acharyas commented and then he would think about how to pre prepare his own purport his own commentaries on Srimad Bhagavatam. Sometimes devotees would be rushing and they would say, Prabhupada, your translation is very slow. It's very slow these days. And Prabhupada would say, he said, I have to think carefully about it. He said, not that I just rush at it and just write anything. He said, I have to think very carefully how to present the Srimad Bhagavatam for the whole world. Because previously Srimad Bhagavatam was studied only by very devoted people. The commentaries were in Sanskrit. So the people who knew Sanskrit were the ones who would read Srimad Bhagavatam. But Srila Prabhupada prepared the English translation to Srimad Bhagavatam. There are I don't know of any other word-for-word -word translations of Srimad Bhagavatam. If there are, there are very few. Bhagavad Gita's are there, but Srimad Bhagavatam, not many people. So Srimad Bhagavatam is very, very special literature and Prabhupada wanted to present it for the world and so he has to prepare the purports in such a manner that even people like herself who come from a, a, a background without any connection with the culture that we can also understand and begin to gradually appreciate the importance of this literature. So Srila Prabhupada wanted so much that we would study his books he said, I'm not writing the books just simply for the devotees to sell, but it's for you to study, to read and study yourself. So it's very important for us to have a program. So many people are in our movement, but there's so many, they've never gone through the Srimad Bhagavatam. They've never gone through Prabhupada's books. They don't take the time to read. We have to read very carefully and go through the books. Every day we should read, we should go through these books. So now more and more devotees are campaigning and encouraging devotees to read. 
reading groups are formed. We have different reading groups in different parts of the world. Devotees get together and they read together Prabhupada's books. So it's a very important activity. But Prabhupada said even more important than reading is explaining and discussing together. Reading is good, but even more important is you sit together and explain and discuss, just like we're doing here every morning. Very important activity. Okay? Hare Krishna. Srimad. Oh, Jananivas Prabhu. Hare Krishna. When Srila Prabhupada was uh, uh, translated uh, Bhagavad Gita, uh, he was uh, uh, um, what's the devotee's name? Who was the scholar? Was it, it, Prabhupada's uh, disciple. Not Pradyumna. Hmm? Hayagriva. Yeah, Hayagriva. <coughs> so Hayagriva was doing something with Prabhupada's Gita, in the English or something. So he said to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, he said, here is some, uh, what you've put in your book, it's exactly the translation, it's exactly the same as this Mayavadi who's written Bhagavad Gita, he, it's in his book, and your, your, your translation is exactly the same as the Mayavadi's translation. And Prabhupada said, that's okay. He said, any translation will do. And he said, but what is needed is the Vaishnav purports. That is what is lacking in the world today. The purports of the Vaishnavas. Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Janani Vas Prabhu. Very nice quote. The translations may be the same. The Mayavadi translation of the Bhagavad Gita may be the same as ours. But he said, what we need is the Vaishnava purports. So it's Prabhupada's purports are so essential for us to understand these books. Without Prabhupada's purports, we will never understand, we'll never know what these books are. So we're so much indebted to Srila Prabhupada. The translation is there, the Sanskrit is there anyway. So if they want to, the advice Jai. Recently, I've heard a couple of times God Brothers quoting previous Acharyas and then trying to explain Srila Prabhupada's not repeating the same point or saying something different and trying to relegate it or in my my the way I took it trying to well they're not trying but denigrating it that Srila Prabhupada would make many encouraging statements and uh, I just wanted to make uh, put it for the discussion that uh, proper understanding for Prabhupada Nugas is that we understand the previous Acharya's commentaries through the commentary of Srila Prabhupada, through his purports. Our access to the previous acharyas is through Srila Prabhupada. And if you were forced, of course, it's an important point that in the absolute sense there is no disagreement among the acharyas, but then there are apparent uh, differences that are sometimes hard for someone to reconcile. But I wanted to put it out there that my understanding is the proper mood of a disciple of Srila Prabhupada or a follower of Srila Prabhupada is that they should see the previous Acharya's teachings through the perspective of Srila Prabhupada's purports, not the other way around. And it's becoming more common that people will quote previous Acharyas, which is no, nothing, that's wonderful. Srila Prabhupada's given us a letter of introduction to the previous Acharyas if we are a sincere follower and disciple. But there, 
to me, it seems as if there's a bit of misunderstanding, or you might even go so far to say a lack of chastity if you think that you have the intelligence to understand that a previous Acharya is saying this, which is correct, when compared to Srila Prabhupada saying something which is not the full or complete, or some people will say incorrect understanding. So I put that consideration or comment. <laughs> Rajendranandana Prabhu is of the opinion that we should be chaste to Srila Prabhupada and we should just hear Srila Prabhupada's purports and that sh sh by Srila Prabhupada's, on the basis of Srila Prabhupada's guidance, we can understand the commentaries of the Acharyas. Right? I didn't say only read, but you have to read his comments, his books first before you enter into reading. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I agree. That definitely, without reading Prabhupada's books first, we have no right to go to other people, other books. First study Prabhupada's books very carefully and, and intensely. And then, if you're still looking for more, you may want to read books by other people. Acharyas. But certainly without going through Prabhupada's books in the beginning, then it can be very dangerous. And this should, this is, this should be our, uh, this is the chastity of a member of ISKCON, that Srila Prabhupada is the founder Acharya, that we're faithful when we first hear from him. And we accept him as the ultimate authority and our Shiksha Guru. Uh, to add something to this, uh, Prabhupada was going to the uh, Bhagavad Gaudiya Math in Calcutta and uh, with Roberti Nandana Swami. And Roberti Nandana Swami asked him, when we go to the Bhagavad they got a very big library there. Is it okay if I can get some books there? And Prabhupada said, what books do you want? He said, I want the uh, Brahma Samhita and the Jaiva Dharma. Prabhupada said, yes. He said, you can get. He said, but actually, my Guru Maharaj wrote all these books for me. My Guru Maharaj what? He wrote these books for me. These books. He wrote these books for me. Oh, he wrote for him, for Prabhupada. Didn't write them for us. I just heard this memory recently, so I'll add just a couple of points. One was that he said, get the books that were not edited by the disciples of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur after his demise. He said, don't read those, read the ones published beforehand. And then he said, it's very difficult to understand my spiritual master's writings. And then he said, that's the, that's, the, that's the boom line. He said, actually, my spiritual master wrote those, his books for me. Mm. Which, I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an idiot, but when I heard Srila Prabhupada say that, in my mind, I thought he truly understood the teachings of his spiritual master and lived them and then gave them to others. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, Srila Prabhupada pointed out to devotees, to some of the, his disciples, that the books by Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati were written for people like Srila Prabhupada, for his disciples, not for, not for all of us coming from different background, cultural background. Prabhupada was saying his books, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati's books are much more difficult to understand. Okay, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Kaur Premanande.